You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. We're going to get to our wonderful guest, Laura Vandervoort, in just a second. You know, Supergirl from Smallville, V Wars, my ex-girlfriend from years ago and all that. First of all, we're taking a little break like we do every year. Well, last year was really the first year. But uh, we're going to take Ryan. We're going to take uh, Christmas break. Yeah, we're going to take the 24th off, which is Christmas Eve. You guys don't want to be listening on Christmas Eve anyway. And then the 31st, New Year's Eve. So those two two weeks we're going to take off, but we're going to come back. And also, I want to give Ryan here a little break. Bryce, uh, my producer, who's been working his ass off as well, and Mia, my editor, I want them to give a chance for them to see their family, just chill out. Just see anybody else, really. Anybody but me. Stay away from me. So no podcast for the 24th and 31st, so you guys are aware. Uh, we will be back on January 7th, ready to go, baby. Ryan, we're going to be ready to go. By the way, do it. you could still listen to old episodes if you're bored or if you're like want to catch up, you haven't uh, listened to one. Uh, we're going to come in at 2020 with a, a few sweet episodes. Stephen Amell, I'm just going to announce it. I'm just going to say it from Arrow. I mean, Arrow is exploding all over, but you're going to hear much more about his life. And if you're not an Arrow fan, you're, you're still going to love it. Also, two actors from Lord of the Rings are coming on the show in the beginning of the year. Very excited. And also, my producer Bryce and I are working on something in the beginning of the year for a really tasty treat for everybody. So for the new year, you want to stick around to see this. So come January, I, think, I believe it's the 7th, we're going to go balls out here. Trust me. Also, and for the holiday, look, if you uh, you know those cameo things, I do the cameo thing. So if you want a personalized video from me, you can tell me what to say. I'm a puppet. I also want to thank all of you for your messages about my grandfather Irving's passing. It's been really tough. And uh, I'm staying busy, but reading your messages, it makes me smile. My grandmother was like, oh my God, there's a thousand messages. I go, look at these things they're saying. And she was just taken aback. I, don't, I think anybody who read it would be taken aback, but she was so happy and you made her smile. And I really appreciate that. And your loyalty to the show, to me, to my family and friends. Thank you everyone who came to the Roxy a few weeks ago to watch us perform Left on Laurel. And those stage it, we did a stage it. So if I ever tell you about a stage it, we do online performances. So it's like an online, um, you know, you can go and watch us recording or playing music in my basement pretty much. And uh, we had a whole bunch of great people and prizes given away. I'll, I'll let you know when we do it again. But Leah Stubbs, Brandy Eady, Joe Surgent, Biddy, Betty Sick, you guys rock, top bitters. Happy holidays. It's been a good year, Ryan, hasn't it? Oh, it's been great. What are you going to do for the new year? For the new year? Ugh. You know, I'm going to hang out with you a bunch. Okay, that's good. You know, I haven't figured it out. I appreciate <laughs> your honesty. Well, you know, look, uh, this has been a challenging year for me and a great year. When I say challenging, you guys know I went I went away for a while to get my head together, lost my grandfather, who's my best friend, had some shit going on. But I was in a dark place, and I, and I got through it. Or, you know what, I'm not going to say I got through it. You guys helped me through it, but I'm still going through it. We all are going through it. We consistently, every day is a new day. And um, I'm here, you're here, and I, I really have fallen in love with this podcast. It's given me purpose. Uh, there was a uh, woman who came up to me at the last con in England crying and saying how much inside of you uh, affected her life. You never think you're going to change people's lives when you do anything. You do it because, oh, this is fun, and then you start to realize it might just make an impact on people's lives. So that's cool. So thank you for that. I'm very grateful for you. Uh, um, I've learned a, a tremendous amount this year. I've learned from my guests. I have learned from Ryan. I have learned mostly from you guys. When you tweet me or message me or email Jess about the podcast, I read them all. Don't think I don't. It, there's a lot. So if I don't respond all the time, in fact, after this episode today, you're about to listen to Laura Vandervoort, we're going to do a new thing, intros, outros. And I'm going to tell you some things that's go that are going on in the beginning. I'm going to tell you what I think about the episode after and read some messages from you guys. So you might want to stick around for that. Lastly, and maybe many of you are doing it, and I've talked to you about it a lot, but it's the holidays, and if you aren't following Inside of You, please just take a few seconds on social to follow us at Inside of You Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can catch up on merch, episode highlights, bonus content we have for the week. You know, like those sweet videos I shoot while I'm interviewing folks. Uh, look, it's so important for you guys to subscribe and get your pals and family too. That way I could pay Ryan and Bryce and uh, our kick-ass uh, producer and Cassandra, my publicist, 
all these people, uh, you know, we do it for free or they don't do it for free, but, uh, you listen to it for free. So, uh, now you know why I'm, I'm asking you to get more subscribers and all that stuff, but thanks for your loyalty. And I'm just, uh, very proud of the, uh, the guys and gals that work on here on the, on the podcast. Thank you, Jessica. I don't know what I'd do without you. And also, uh, you know, we have a sweet merch store, go to inside of you podcast.com. Tons of cool shit left on Laurel shit, band stuff, all that. Uh, that's about it. We're going to get into Laura Vandervoort. Remember, we're gone for the next two weeks, but you could listen to old episodes. We're back on the seventh with a big episode, a couple of doozies. And uh, that's it. Uh, I'm going to talk to you after the show. Let's get inside Laura Vandervoort. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. Yeah, I wanted to say congrats on your album drop. Thank you. That's quite kind of you. Yes. Did you download it? No. Well, you're going to, right? I mean, with you sitting here, I probably will have to. You'll like it. I think you'll like it. (laughs) No, I'm sure I'll love it. I've heard one of the songs that you had, uh, was your hometown radio played it? (laughs) Yeah. That was great. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. What was that? I think it was Let's Go for a Ride. Yeah. Anyway, guys, the album, they know, they know about the I've talked enough about the album. You have. They go, yeah, left on Laurel. We are we're already streaming it. Anyway, we're really excited about it. It's been a really good ride. Yeah, it's It's great. Fun. You do this. You have ideas and things that you want to do in life. Most time people say, uh, I'm gonna direct a movie. I'm gonna write this. I'm gonna and they never do it. I, I I'm sure I was that guy. I'm gonna and then one day you're like, why don't we just do it? And how good does that feel when you actually do something? Well, even when you directed uh, uh, your movie. Back in the day, Back yeah. in the day. That was huge. That was a huge undertaking, and you did it, and it was great. Thank you. What gets in the way, don't you think, is how good it is, how people's response to things. It, that's always what matters, right? That, I mean, it's not what should matter. What should matter is you accomplish something. Right. You tell a story you want to tell. You're proud of it. You work hard. You work with the people you want to work with. But we always worry about what others will say afterwards, and that shouldn't be the case. You know, my friend, um, name drop, I I talk about him all the time because I love him, but Dax, he always has a lot of good advice. I think because he's went through so much hell and, you know, faced so much adversity and drugs and all that shit. But he said, you know, when his movie Chips didn't do that well, it just didn't do what they wanted in the box office, and certainly back in the day didn't make, you know, do do exactly what I wanted and why. He goes, "Let let me break it down to you, dude. If I look at myself, in Detroit, you know, he's in, you know grew up in Michigan, little blonde haired kid, and if I said to him as like a ten year old, he's a ten year old boy, I go, hey, how do you feel about directing your own movie in Hollywood and being the lead actor in it? Do you think the ki- kid would give any shit about how successful it was or the money he made? All he thinks immediately is, I'm in a movie, I get to direct it. Wow, it's that inner child that just comes to life. Mm-hmm. And if it's hard to keep that because then it gets in the way. Like, oh, success, you know, money means success. It doesn't. Money means happiness. It doesn't. Right. And that's one of the things that you've always been great at is not being a child, although you are a child. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's basically wrong. you are a child. I am a child. But you enjoy just the fact that you get to be in this business and do what you do. You don't care about all that other stuff. Well, yes. To a I, point. But I, but I do. <laughs> I do, even though I, the goal is to not do that, to just wake up and do something because you love it and not worry about what everybody else is thinking about you. Mm-hmm. You're doing it because you love it. You want to do it. You walk away and you're not worrying about, I wonder if they thought I was funny. Was I good enough? Does what they say, what they uh, talk about or what, how they feel about what you did is really, it's, it shouldn't be the be all end all. No, but it's there. I know. Well, it's I think that drives there. us. That drives us. Of course. Yeah. Well, what do you do? I mean, how do you how do you separate them? I mean, I know. Look, we we have a little history. Why don't we get into that first? Why don't we just oh, just God. the elephants in the I'm room? Sorry, Ryan. By the way, yeah, this is Ryan. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> I'm here to be a third wheel, apparently. You're, you're, you're the therapist you're, today. You're, you're, you could be our therapist. Oh, Christ. No, but Laura and I we met on Smallville, mm-hmm. and we were just friends. I mean, it. We she was dating someone. I was dating someone. There was just it was very um, platonic and and just cool. And I will say you were the only cast member to, cause I came into the show season seven and they already had friends and family and did their own things. And none of the cast hung out with me. And Michael is the only one that took me t-shirt shopping. 
he reached out in that way. And I thought that was really nice because yeah. I was the newbie. Well, thank you. I, I always I, I always feel bad for guest stars coming on shows, especially after they're established, because there's a family there and you're already imagine like you walk in like you're you're Ryan's girlfriend. You're Amanda. All right. First time she's walking into Ryan's family and, you know, everybody's doing their thing. Uncle Joe's. uh you know, uh, playing ColecoVision. I don't know what you're doing, but you know, oh everybody's God, you doing their it. thing. They're loud, they're <laughs> boisterous. And she walks in. Isn't it nice when uncle Joe comes over and goes, Hey, so, uh, what, what, you know, just starts talking to her and says, Oh, let me show you this. Uh, what some, somebody to reach out because a lot of times people assume like, Oh yeah. Oh, that's the new guest star this week. Great. Great. Who cares? It's fine. We don't, it's not that anybody doesn't like you or wasn't. No, but you, you're tired. You don't have time to meet a million guest stars every week or every month. So I, I got it. It was a little scary and strange for me, but you were the one that was like, hey, let's go to, was it Cherry Bomb or something in Vancouver? Cherry Bomb. Yeah. Sounds provocative, but it, it was, a, <laughs> you know, it was one of these cool stores. I tried to franchise. It, it's a franchise. So I tried to, my friend Tom, like, let's open a Cherry Bomb in LA. I'm like, eh, I think we'd lose money. Like I've lost on every investment I've ever made. I invested in a the furniture warehouse in um, Vancouver. Remember the furniture warehouse that was across from the Roxy? No. These guys are great, Dan. It's still there. Big success story. And they were like, hey. And I was always like, I want to invest. I want to invest. This is great. And so there's this opportunity in Whistler. They're like, hey, here it is. And this is the money. And I'm telling you, this place folded faster than you could eat. I mean, it was like the Millennium Falcon there and it was gone. And I was like, wait a minute, what? And they're like, I'm so sorry, Rosie. We're going to get your money back. And I was like, I can't, how did, it, how did we lose money that fast? There was this a whole bunch of discrepancies and things. And he says, we're going to get your money back. So it was about eight months later that my business manager called me, Mark, and goes, hey, we got a $2,000 check from the furniture warehouse. I'm like, really? $2,000? Well, we're your about- Your agent sounds like Harlan Williams. We're about, really, body. <laughs> we're about $98,000 off. <laughs> <laughs> and then every month, two thousand dollars until I was paid off. Yeah. And I, I really commended them, and it was really sweet that they, because most investments you lose, you yeah. know. But anyway, back to that. Yeah, I thought you were just really sweet and kind and shy, and uh, you, you do a lot of. You've done now. You're getting lead roles, but you've done a lot of guest stars. You know, I've never done. I don't think a guest star in my life. <clears throat> better than me, I guess. No, no, it's not a better thing. <laughs> I, I, I guess I got. I lucky. haven't done a lot. I mean, in Canada, it's it's different. It's a different industry in Canada, right? So I've done a lot of guest stars growing up. Um, but I think that's yeah. good for nerves, isn't it? No, like, no, no. It's uh, it's terrible. I thought you'd get better at it. Like okay, like then in bigger situations, you wouldn't be nervous at all. No, I, I mean, I can't speak for everyone, but in my case, I I don't like going on to a new set and knowing I'm only there for a week and not getting a chance to like know the cast and be a part of the family it's 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 like being that girlfriend that comes in and no one likes her not that they don't like me but they don't care to get to know me because you're leaving so it's right. that weird you yeah. want to invest in the character but you don't but she really... didn't leave you ended up being yeah. there for the entire season seven yeah right yeah so that was cool they liked you enough and eight yeah and nine and ten <laughs> you have a lot of issues that i have tell me about my issues michael well we know about our, our issues like okay look look we dated we dated, all right? It took time till you weren't in a relationship. I was in a relationship. We started out as friends and boom, we started dating and it was great. And, um, you know, it didn't end up not working out. You're looking at me and nodding. <laughs> I mean, who, you know, it's like, I always tell my friend Shira, I'm like, Shira's like, she just didn't call me back. <laughs> she doesn't cry to everything. This is just one particular relationship. She's actually really strong now. She's Shira. I stuck up for you. Hi, Shira. She doesn't listen to the podcast. She doesn't support me in anything I do. <laughs> but um, Shira, she's like, I don't get it. What do I, the, you know, why even are you on an app and they don't respond? I'm like, listen, man, 99% of the time it doesn't work out. And then if you get married, then you 50% of the time you divorce. Right. So why not just go have fun and expect it like the, this is what it is. Let's enjoy it. And if it ends, it ends. It most likely will end. Is that? Th I is think that that's thought? your problem. Yeah, yeah. I think you're looking at it the wrong way. So I'm giving her bad advice. I'm not asking for advice. No, no. I'm giving her bad oh, advice. Oh, yes, yes. Ryan, do you agree with that? Run that by me one more time. <laughs> He's like, I fell asleep. <laughs> I, I'm, just, I was actually, I'm still stuck on your Shira impression just from a second ago. <laughs> it was very sad. <laughs> Well, that share is awesome. And she's like me. So we're like the two single people who call each other at the wee hours of the night going, God, what is going on? I am old. There's a reason you shouldn't be giving her advice then. You know what I mean? I've never um, dated. 
I you're always in relationships. I'm always in, I if I go on a date with you, expect two years at least. Well, that's what happened with us. That's what happened because I. What is that? You just get hooked. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I've never been out and someone said, let's go for a drink and I have a drink and I never see them again. I've never had one night stand. Like I've never, okay. I am a relationship Well, girl. see, maybe that's the problem with you. Maybe you're like, oh, I'm on a date and it went well, so I'll just date this guy for two years. And then at the end of two years, I mean, I don't like, say two years. I just keep going. Well, I mean, if you look back on your relationships and look, I, I, you, sometimes you let the good ones go. Sometimes you're like, oh, fuck, why did I let that one go? That, I, mean, I haven't done I'm, that yet, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Ryan, shut up, <laughs> please. Anyway, look, it's hard to date in Los Angeles, especially all my friends in Indiana and my friends in the Midwest are always like, dude, how do you do it, man? It's like, it's gotta be hard out there because everybody, you know, first they say, do they only go out with you because, you know, you, you were on a show or you're this and I'm like, you know, probably. Right. <laughs> no, I, I don't think that's true. I think, I think ultimately you well, have. It depends to. on the person too. If they're looking to get into the industry, they might be dating you for that reason. You know what I mean? It yeah. depends on the level they're at. It, it's best for you to not date someone in this business. That's my opinion. It is. It's hard to. It's hard to uh, date someone because they have to be so strong psychologically to put like, up with you well yeah. oh, put up with me are oh you my kidding? god oh my god they've got you to need be so much attention yeah yeah well well you know what though uh, here's the thing i have been working on myself a lot and i feel like what's important is it's a give and take you know i always have to be busy i'm like not busy but i'm just my mind's always working i have add you have to sort of accept it uh, this is who i am mm -hmm. but i'm also very giving and you know i don't maybe i'm wrong am i no you're you, hmm. <laughs> Oh, that was years ago. That was many years ago. That was many years ago. Five yeah, or I'm six years ago? Oh my God. Us? Yeah. No, more than that. I've dated someone for five years. I've been engaged. It's been like nine years, if not. Yeah, that was a weird story about the engagement thing. That was the worst time of my life. I was basically brainwashed. Well, what happened? I had no idea. Well, what happened was I remember, <gasps> no, no names, not bringing it up, but I remember uh, somebody, I, I bought, the dude's truck yeah and said it was perfect and this and that and a week later it was in the shop and pretty much it was in the shop every week and it never worked yeah and then i find out that you guys are seeing each other and I'm <laughs> yeah like, i'm a, like yeah yeah it was a weird story how it all happened it was like kind of friends of friends the friends of friends should not have introduced us yeah they're um, like hey uh you uh yeah are you don't are you and laura broken up i'm like yeah okay cool it was odd, it, but you know. I didn't know at the time it was bad. You know what I mean? When you're in yeah, it. Yeah. And sure. also I don't give up on shit. So um Don't yeah. give up on us, baby. We still love Remember that song? David Soul from Starsky and Hutch sang that. No one cares. I really lost my head last night. I know it's awkward. Somebody actually wrote in a tweet once, it's like, he'll break into song and it's just awkward and weird. I'm like, yeah, well, fuck off. Don't listen. <laughs> it's fucking me. It's what I do. Yeah. Then now, now all of a sudden I have no listeners the next time. <laughs> um, all right, here's what happened. We're at a con, and right before we're going to go on stage with you, me, Tom Welling, Kristen Krug, all from Smallville, some girl goes, did you guys date? And right before they go, it was it was like this. It was like, <laughs> yeah, he broke up with me a couple times. or th He broke up with me three, three times. times. And Michael Rosen, I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? And I had to walk out and like. No, no, no. I said three times. And I said, every time I left town, he broke up with me. And you were like, that's not how it happened. We have different versions of the story. Michael Rosenbaum. And then you went on stage. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, you always F with me. You know, you're always like. I enjoy it. Thoroughly. It is. You, you know, you always have. And that's that's the good part of our, our relationship, which is I like you. You're a smart ass. And I think you're an amazing person. You really are. You like I look at like things that you did like in the past, like you made an Irv shirt and you got me this oh, yeah. hockey sweatshirt. Yeah. That's with the old timers. It was like Huff and Puff Hockey League. You know, you were really generous and you were really, you know, you loved your family. You always want kids. You always talked about kids. You were so jealous in a way of your sister, Sarah, that you love and you yeah. want, you know, your great uh, aunt to her two kids. And yeah. thanks. Thank you. So yeah, I, I know a lot. That's the nicest you've ever been to me. Is that true? No, I'm kidding. Maybe. No. no. But I but I was like, you know, you're a great person. And for whatever reason, you know, it didn't work. You know, the timing, the, where I was, where you were take over <laughs> i don't know why we didn't work out but um i'm still figuring it i mean i'm 35 now 
Uh, definitely not where I want to be career wise and life wise, but you can't control that stuff. You know, um, it's a tough business and it's especially tough to date in this town, like you said. So yeah, I still want kids. I still want marriage. Well, you just said something. Well, you said it's, um, you're not where you want to be. You were just uh, on a show, uh, Bitten. Well, that was a long time ago. It just ended two years ago. Oh, that was like three years ago. Yeah, we did three seasons and that was the show that broke us up. Um, because remember I was here and I got the offer. You probably don't remember. It was nighttime and I was like, I, I have to decide if I'm going to take this. And you were like, don't take it. And then I was like, fuck you, I'm going to take it. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. This is not fair. <laughs> this is wrong. You said they're offering me shit money. The script's not even that great. I don't really want to move there. I You just gave me all these cons. I don't think that's the case. On my life, you said, look, if you would have said, Michael, I love the script. I love the idea. I love the character. It's good. All these things. I would have been like, yes. Think of, who would say no? Okay, well, to be fair to the audience that liked the show, and I actually ended up really loving it. Oh, okay. they, they wrote the character, became stronger. You know, like, okay. let's backtrack on not saying that no, no no i'm not dissing the show i'm saying that in the beginning you yes weren't i wasn't sold. sure but i i guess i i was asking for <laughs> your advice what happens is you say i want your honest opinion don't ever give your honest opinion ryan i want to know you know you tell me am i fat you are absent my mom once said michael i'm your mother i love you i know you'll be honest with me is my ass fat does do these jeans make my ass look fat i go mom your ass makes your ass look fat sorry guys if somebody if i looked at you laura physically like, I want you to look at me. And if Ugh. I said, Laura, do I have a big head? Be honest. Yeah. Thank you. I have a big head. In Spanish, that's uh, yo tengo grande cabeza. And ego. No, 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 no. I... <laughs> <sighs> Ryan, get on the mic. Ryan, I'm so glad you're here. You're supposed to. This um, is just. <laughs> what, do you, what do you feel about this? I'm just in the middle of, I don't know. <laughs> do you, are you uncomfortable? A little bit. Are you? No, I mean, I mean, you guys seem okay with it. I, I am We've probably, gotten to a point where we're fine. You guys are, you guys are fine with it. I, I am new to this. I just, you know, I feel like I have to mediate it for some reason. No, no. We are completely different personalities. Yeah. And maybe that's why it worked when it did. Yeah. Well, like there's the, like right now, there's not a nerve in my body. There's not like any resentment. There's no uh, dislike. There's just like, this is joy. This right. is fun. To me, this is fun talking to you openly. And I'm not in the, I don't feel weird. If I thought it was going to be weird, like I, there's some ex-girlfriends I would not have come in here. Right. You, I felt like, I like Laura. She's cool. She texts me when Irv was sick. I've never I'll been an her. asshole to you. You should have been in the In Love podcast. In Love with Michael Rosenbaum and Chris Sullivan. That podcast is more about relationships. And honestly, I think one of the reasons that we're okay now is we had the first time we had seen each other in years was in Paris at a convention. Oh, yeah. And I was like, of course, it's like the city of love and I have to see that guy. Because I was still like, I don't know how I feel about this. And then we were fine. And I was like, oh, I enjoy, you know, poking at him and yeah we're still smart asses with each yeah. other that hasn't changed i don't have that relationship with anyone else so i enjoy that yeah i do too that was it was nice and i remember after especially that on gone, stage if i can like throw you under the bus it's great and you do constantly yeah yeah but i, I noticed like people would say dude is that gonna be weird i'm like I, I i don't know and then after paris i go wasn't weird at all yeah i think we're both good sports and we're both a little more mature you're definitely more mature than i am all right let's get into this so you're you almost died as a kid, by the way. I did. Spina bifida? No. Meningitis. No, meningitis. Bacterial, meningitis. yeah. Now, what does that mean? What happens when you have bacterial meningitis? Well, I, the story they tell me, um, when I was born, my sister was getting her tonsils out and she wasn't supposed to come near me because she had a bacteria. My sister came over to meet me in the hospital and jealous sister coughed on me. While she had this bacteria, I, be, I developed bacterial meningitis and I was in the hospital for months and uh, swelling on the brain. Um, I was paralyzed on the left side of my body and they had to drain the liquid from my brain. And I guess, you know, as my mom says, they, they told her one day that if your um, if her temperature doesn't go down, we're going to have to give her this medication of sorts that will either make her blind or deaf. If her temperature goes down, we won't give it to her. And the next morning my temperature dropped and they didn't give me that drug. Otherwise I would be blind or deaf right now. But I had a learning disability from the meningitis my whole life. That's something that I had to like work through myself. There's no cure for that. You just find other ways to, in school, I would just memorize textbooks. I didn't actually fully understand everything. I memorized it so I could get straight A's. 
Um, so you find your own way. And I think that's why I went into acting because it was memorization. It was becoming someone that you're not. I was always embarrassed in school. Like they'd pull me out for testing. I had these surveyors that followed me for years through like elementary school. So yeah, it, it really fucked with who I was as a kid, but sort of made me who I am now. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, I remember stuff that you've told me, but that... And when you say a learning disability, as a kid, I always felt like I was just stupid. I couldn't comprehend things. I'd read things and I just, because of the ADD. And right. like when you, when you, so you could quickly memorize things, but you wouldn't be able to comp, like uh, absorb them. I'd, I, d- it depends what it was. There was a lot that I was able to fully understand and absorb and was very much into, but things like I couldn't tell time. I didn't understand a clock. Are you looking for a clock right now? Yeah, that's right there. Um, Math, uh, I'm directionally challenged still. Like I have, I still have says those left, issues. You'll go right. No, not like that. But like, is that north or or south? I just, I'm. It's very different for me. Um, and there are a lot of people who have the same disability where you, it's not like you're um, dyslexic, but you have trouble and you flip things. So my whole life, my goal was to appear to be like everyone else. Right. Which fucks with you when you're trying to be like everyone else and not yourself. So that now as an adult, I still struggle with people. I'm, I don't want them to think of me differently, but at the same time, I want to be who I, it's, it's a weird thing. It definitely molded me in a way that I'm insecure about stuff. I have social anxiety. All right, well, tell I don't me about like that. people. <laughs> I, all right. So, so here's the thing though. I feel though, when you are in something you're un- like, like for instance, if I go to a premiere or if I have to take pictures, I'm uncomfortable. So what I do is I jump into a defense mechanism. I'm a character yep. just to make myself comfortable. And I'm like, I'm going to do what I can so I can be comfortable because I'm not going to let this take over. Yeah. But there are those times when I'm, then I'm just like, oh, I get through it and I feel good. Now I'm like, okay, I'm okay now. Do you feel like when you go to a premiere, you do these things, you're like, I don't want to be here. I don't like this. And all of a sudden there's a moment where you're like, oh, I connect with someone. I'm good now. That person saved me in a way. I like them. I would say for myself, it's similar in that I need to put on a character, not a character, but I just can't be myself. Um, And I'm not like you, whereas the character is loud and has energy. (laughs) My character is like, just calmly get through this, put on my like Sasha Fierce version of myself. And then my first thing when I go into an event is like, I want to figure out how to leave as soon as possible. You want to just get out of there? Yeah. I want to find the quickest exit. And, and it doesn't really matter what the event is or, you know, who I know there. It's, it's a job. It's, do you feel like you belong? No. I mean, do you, I don't think anybody does, though. Do you? I have been fighting th- with this for a long time where I just never feel comfortable with who I am. I never feel like I'm accepted. I never feel. And, and Joe Latruglio, who's on the show yesterday, he's a, a, um, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. He's an old friend of mine. He starts saying, you have to stop it. What he does now, because he always felt like he didn't belong. And that's how I've always felt. He's like, but you're here, which means you belong. Stop, get out of your way. It doesn't matter if you're around people that you think are, oh, they're bigger stars or this. You belong where you are. See, it's crazy to me that you think you don't belong because- It's crazy for me to think you you think you don't belong. But I would say I'm, I've been very open about that. Like I'm introverted. I talk about that. Whereas you come across as someone who's comfortable in every situation. You walk in a room, you're the loudest guy. Now I understand that that's your safety I'm mechanism. I'm you. Which is crazy. I, I think I shut down and you rev up to survive. That's interesting. Yeah. Ryan's nodding like you fucking know. Ryan, don't talk to me. No, I, I shut down too. Yeah. No, are you it. introverted? Mm-hmm. Like right now. Yeah, you seem like you are. Like right. Are you shutting down? Me? I'm shutting down. Yeah. Are you like C three PO? Guys don't fight. <laughs> the odds of living are more than three. You're three, like three, our three, kid three, right four, now. Four, 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 four. <laughs> four. Inside of you is brought to you by Sleep Number Stop, folks. You're talking to some dude who's had seven spine surgeries, and I know what comfort is. And no other bed has has helped me out like Sleep Number. Period. The end. A Sleep Number bed has done everything for me. And if you're thinking about getting a bed. Quit wasting your money on other stuff. Sleep number, uh, it allows me to adjust on each side of the bed. And since I'm single most of my life, I could put it at 85, which is pretty nice and stiff. And then I could put it at a nice 25 if I want to sleep on a cloud. I I tend to roll back and forth to each side of the bed throughout the night. I also have this, uh, uh, what do you call it, when it just brings you up. 
You know, it's a button. It's a zzzz, it's an upright position so I can meditate in the morning. I think that's the, the legal term for it. Is the that's what I'm going to call it yeah. because this is my personal experience. I'm going to talk about my personal experience in sleep number and I'm going to give it to him. The sleep number 360 smart bed senses your movements in the middle of the night, automatically adjusts to keep you sleeping comfortably throughout the night. Sleep IQ technology inside the bed attracts how you're sleeping, gives you personalized insights for your best sleep. These guys take it seriously. They take sleep seriously. Quality sleep is essential, as we all know. I have anxiety. I, I don't sleep well. Uh, it, it helps you wake up in the morning rested. You got What do you have, Ryan? You have your sanity. Mm-hmm. You have your optimal health, don't you? Oh, yeah. How, I mean, you ever wake up and you just feel scatterbrained? Especially around the holidays now. Yeah. Oh, was, was that rhetorical? Yeah, I don't know. I, sometimes I feel like I'm angry about it because it's so important. And people, you know, I go to my grandmother's house and I'm like, I can't sleep on your effing bed. I say effing. I don't say the bad word. You don't swear in front of your grandma? No, 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 no. I say, I love you. I want to stay with you. I want to be here for you. Uh-huh. But I want to I want to be comfortable. I want to sleep my own Your mattress is from 1960. Do you understand? <laughs> and I don't want this. these other mattresses, these phonies out there. I don't want to go to a random department store and just grab a mattress because it's new. I want to be comfortable so I could give my grandmother as much love as possible. Does that make sense, Ryan? That made total sense. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep number. They've, I've always been a big fan. I hope uh, they continue to be my sponsor. Make spirits bright this holiday season with gifts for quality sleep. The Sleep Number 360 smart bed adjusts on each side to give all a good night. From $9.99 only at a sleep number store or sleepnumber.com slash inside. That's sleepnumber.com slash inside. Get yourself a bed, will you? Inside of you is brought to you by Honey. I have Honey and I love it. It's such a no brainer. I can't even tell you what you're missing. Do you know that Honey has found it's over 10 million members, over a billion dollars in savings? Honey has over 100,000 five-star reviews on the Google Chrome store. I've said enough. You want to get items cheaper? Honey is a free browser extension that automatically finds the best promo codes whenever you shop online. This means you always get the best deals without even trying on over 20,000 sites such as Amazon, J.Crew, eBay, Expedia, etc. If you're buying gifts this holiday season, you need Honey. If you're not, you probably know someone who is. So do them a solid and tell them about Honey. Honey can help make sure that you're getting the best price for whatever you're buying, and it's free. Come on, it's free. I'm not selling you anything. It's free. That's just two clicks away. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash IOU. Inside of You is brought to you by what a great product. I have so much of this stuff around my house. Uncommon Apothecary. Anybody who knows, look, put it this way, Ryan. You yeah. said something when you came into the house today. Yeah, this isn't this isn't staged, folks. Well, I found out my parents are into CBD oil, and I mentioned Uncommon Apothecary, and I told them about the discount, and now they have it, and they love it. They ordered it. They did, and it's cheaper than the stuff they were uh, using before, and better, and better. I love this stuff. I really love this stuff. Everybody, I, I this is a true story. I went to Florida to visit my grandmother because I lost my grandfather. And uh, I'm sitting there with her old friends, this guy, Larry, great guy. He was a pianist. It was like one of those movies where you think this isn't real. And he goes, I, I, I don't play piano because my fingers, I can't move them around. I got arthritis. I took the, this old man's hand and I rubbed this uncommon apothecary all over it deeply into his fingers and his joints. 30 seconds, he goes, Michael. Look at this. He starts moving his fingers like, like I was like I was Jesus. I'm like, what the come on, Larry? He goes, I don't I'm it, it made everything comfortable. It's a cooling feeling. Larry can move his hands. If we had a piano, he probably would have belted out a couple of Beethoven. You didn't go get him a piano in that moment? I should have, but that's a true story. I swear to God on everything that's a true story. I wish you can call Larry and talk to him. CBD is from the hemp plant. And unlike its sister, Mary Jane, CBD contains less than 0.3% THC, meaning it's not going to get you high. Uncommon Apothecary is the real deal, folks. Unlike many so-called CBD products on Amazon and other online shopping sites, Uncommon Apothecary products are third-party tested to ensure quality, consistency, and the results are posted right on the site. 
It's legal without prescription in all 50 states. And uh, I just love this. Ryan, tell more to head. To ua-cbd.com and use the code INSIDE20 at checkout to receive 20% off for Inside of You listeners and see why thousands are switching from prescriptions to a more natural alternative. That's very true. ua-cbd.com and you use the code INSIDE20. For every item purchased on Common Apothecary, we'll donate $1 to local homeless shelters. UA-CBD.com. Use the code INSIDE20. You know, I'm very open about my learning disability, about being introverted, about struggling. I mean, being a woman in this industry, all that shit. I'm 35. I haven't figured anything out. I know you have had people on your show and there are women who say, you know, I finally figured it out. I meditate. I do yoga. Like, I had a vision board. That's great. I've done that. And I still don't know what the fuck I'm Okay, doing. hang on. All right. First of all, there's nobody on this show, I think, that has ever said, I figured it out. Well, I do don't you know think what, a, a version ev- of yes, that? Yes, but I don't, think, I don't think you ever figured it out. I think at the very end, you're hoping for some sort of peace, some sort of understanding or um, acceptance within yourself yeah. that says, you know what? I was a good person. Mm-hmm. I really tried to help people. I tried to listen. I wasn't always good at it, but I did try. And I, I got better. I tried to improve myself. I tried to respect this place that I live, this beautiful earth, this universe, whatever you believe. I don't have to get in religion, but like there's all these things where you go, you know what? I am okay with my life. I was, yeah. And so right now, if, if I was about to die, I'd say, oh my God, I, I don't, I can't, I couldn't say. All I could say is this if I was dying right now, watch I'll die and then this will be the last thing I said and it's like oh my god how profound or- <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not saying that people figure it out I think what you, what you hit on is that we don't figure things out but we get to a place where we accept where we are and we're happy with that that's the thing right that's see that makes sense and and I don't think I'm there okay and, and, I'm and, okay and maybe that. give yourself uh some sort of what's the word um Ryan Dude, get the dictionary out. You know, I'm not big with words, dude. I'm not big with words here. It's got other things to do. You have to give yourself a, uh, uh, you have to give yourself some, uh, everybody right now is thinking of the word. They know the word that I'm coming up with. You just have to give yourself a little bit more. Credit. Credit uh, uh, credit or, yes. Leeway, little space. A little, 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 like say, hey, it's okay. Yeah. Be good to yourself. So. Every day is different. Every Every day is different in this fucking city, which I don't like Every day is like Sunday. That person who tweeted me is now really out after that one. (laughs) They're out, but like if I if some if I was on my deathbed right now, God willing, I'm not. I would say, man, I wish I would have loved more. I wish I would have listened more. I know that I was on the right track. I know that I was really trying, and it was the beginning of a new me. And boy, I wish I had more time because now I really see the light and I really see what I'm supposed to do. I really see that there is a purpose for me. Hmm. So that's what I would say right now, which is better than if I was to die uh, maybe a year ago. <laughs> and I well, then I got to knock on wood. Stop saying that. Knock on, but you know, uh, there's no wood around here. What the luck from luck? Just, uh... oh, here, I'm sitting in a wooden chair. <laughs> um, but you know, maybe a year ago I said, oh, well, what? I don't even know what, who, I, who am I? What am I doing? I don't even, what's your middle name? Diane. Wow. Yeah. I remember that. Or did you like look that up last night? Well, just Jeff, in case. Jess did. Okay. Thank you, uh, Jess. I knew your middle name's Diane. Or Jess. How do I spell it? D I A N. You know, I want to just, I want to say, <laughs> I want to say another N, but I, yeah, that is right. Another N E. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. My middle name's actually, uh, I was named after Diana Ross. No, a cousin of mine that committed suicide. Well, that yeah. went downhill. Yep. Well, your parents so, really, that's like naming their daughter or their uh, Paris or something like a big name. It's the opposite effect. Well, my like, middle name's Old Yeller, so. Wait. <laughs> no, but I mean, they're naming you. What is it again? It's named after? A, a cousin of mine that I never met. So they're naming you after someone who killed himself. Yeah. That's kind of. But it was in memory of, and it, it's a beautiful you. thing. It, it is a beautiful thing. Yeah. What's also dark is that my you know, my last name is Vandervoort. We just actually, it's exciting. My cousin just had a boy, Austin Vandervoort. So he, he's the first man in the family that's going to finally carry on the name because we've only had women in the family. So um, totally off topic, but hi, Austin. I hope I meet you soon. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, you're 35. Yeah, yeah. 
I know you've always wanted kids. You still want kids? Yes. I, mean, is that, is, I know you sh- shouldn't even ask. It's different because I know you so I could say, hey, you sh- of course you want kids and all that stuff. Right. So, well, you know, you're, you're young still. You are. I'm 47. I'm running out of time. Not as a man. No, you're no, not no, running it's bullshit. out of time for children. Do you realize if I have a child right now, let's say I, I have a kid and by the time I'm 50, that means when- Wait, how my, old are you? 47? Seven. Yeah. But when my kid's 20, just say 20, it's easy. I'm like, I'm 70. Yeah. That's like, that's not, is that fair? I guess, I mean, what's fair? But you're also young at heart, so you would have a lot of fun with them. You'd play with them. You'd I run mean, around, dude, you know. Who knows if I'll be able to move around right, by then. That's I'm true. already, I'm a dude. I'll tell you, I woke up Monday morning, just walked in, and I had a huge fight with my band. Uh, you know, we just got into Left it. on Laura. Yeah, Left on Laura. It might be our first Albums and only available. album, folks. Albums available everywhere. You know, I had having problems with my upper back. I, I played some softball and then tennis, and then, I, you know, I'm just like trying to, you know, I'm getting back in shape. And then I woke up Monday. I couldn't get out of bed. I was like Frankenstein. I sat in my massage chair. I have a massage chair for like I eight know. years now. It's the same one. Uh, I always feel bad now because Ryan Reynolds, no, Ryan Gosling, Goose, Gosling, 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 both beautiful Canadian men, beautiful men. They, he, in this movie, he had a massage chair and, and everybody laughed like, oh, how cheesy. And I was like, oh my God, I have a massage chair. I remember thinking that when I watched the movie and I'm like, but I've had seven back surgeries. I need this fucking yeah. thing. Anyway. So yes, being, getting old does suck and p- living in pain sucks. And that's one thing you've been pretty good at. You might've had some shit going on when you're young, but you're a healthy woman. You know, knock on wood, you, uh, and I look at you and you do have a great career. You do have a great Eddie K. (laughs) Kill career. You do. You're the lead role in stuff. You were in V. You were in Smallville. You had a three uh, episode arc on on Supergirl. I think we forget. I have a new Netflix show coming out. You have a new Netflix show coming out. movie coming out. You produced and and starred in a movie with your, uh, Penson? George, Pinson, Gordon, Gordon, Gordon Pinson, Pinson yeah. uh, Canadian actor. He's a legend in Canada. Right, and then the movie's called Dis- <laughs> Dif- Age of Dysphoria. Dis- I, yeah, Dysphoria. That was pretty good, right? <laughs> yeah, that was good. Yeah, you I'm not looking your, at my notes. You did I don't your have research. Notes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't ever look yeah, at my I, notes. I just kind of skim stuff and then I... I've been wanting to work with Gordon Pinson since I was 12. He was my mentor and I'd never worked with him. He's 88 now, so I developed a movie really with the goal of just working with Gordon. Um, and it's a beautiful film. We're really proud of it. Please go see that, guys. She worked really hard on it, and she's been talking about it for a while. And, and it's annoying important. Michael because no, it's not about it doesn't him. annoy me. And uh, what I'm saying, if you just listen to this conversation right now, if you just hear yourself, you know, because I'm I'm, I'm dwelling on what you said about eight minutes ago. What did I you say? You said, you know, I'm not where I want to be in my career. I'm not where I want to be. This. If you just take a step back. Just take a fucking step. And I'm when I speak to you, it's like I'm looking in a mirror because I need to do this. Ryan, mm-hmm. you need to do this. No matter where we are, where you are, you're where you're supposed to be. Don't forget to, li- like, I'm telling myself this and telling everybody out there, look, look, guys, don't forget to live in the moment. You're not your work. When you work, you work. And if you just are always absorbed with what, what else am I going to get? How much money can I get? How much? You're never going to live in the moment. Life is going past you. Yeah. I, I, I'm not saying you, proverbial. No, you. I understand. I understand. Um, for me, a, as a Canadian uh, living in Los Angeles, it's hard for me to live here. I don't know if it's the same for you because you're not from here, but you've been here longer than I have. I moved here to work and this entire city is all this industry and there's no escape from it. When I landed, I went to Sammy's camera to print a picture of my beautiful dog and there's three actors behind me talking about everything that they've booked. And that's great, but I don't want to hear about it when I'm just in my, like, you know what I mean? It's that constant reminder. Go to the beach, go to the, go on a hike. You don't have to hear these people, but there's always going to be people around. I know, I know, but I'm just saying in Toronto, it's, it's a totally different. Do you want to go back to Toronto? I'm going to move back. Yeah. You are. Yeah, I am. Now you're dating someone. I know we're not going to talk about that. We're not. I know we're not. Where is he from? He from LA. He's from LA. Yeah. So he's aware of that. That you want to go back to Toronto. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Ryan. Um, <laughs> now, you know Ryan. How it's old really are you? Really hot in here. Ronnie. Ronnie. Or uh, Ryan. Ronnie. Oh, Ronnie. Ronnie. Ronnie will be here on the ones and twos. Ronnie. Hey, Ronnie. <laughs> Hi, Ronnie. Ryan's thirty-one. Hello. He's four years younger. Now, I'm not saying this because you're not ungrateful, because you are grateful. Ryan is extraordinarily talented. Mm -hmm. He's funny. He can sing. He's always working. He's editing. He's doing comedy. He's doing everything. Now, he's 
engineering my show right now? Do you think he's hit the peak of his life? Do you think this is what he wants to do for his life? I wish it was. I wish that the show would get so big that I could pay him so much money that Ryan would just love working with me every day and we'd be the next Kevin and Bean. But I know in my heart, Ryan would love to get a show. He would love to get a movie. And that's what he's going for. Now, Ryan, are you able to sit there and take a moment and go, hey, I know what I need to do. This is not what I want to do right now, or I'm just going to enjoy. Can you enjoy things in the moment? Oh, you don't know this isn't the pinnacle of what I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? I've always wanted oh to work. God. All of a sudden, I look on the internet. It's like, I just want to work for Michael Rosenbaum. <laughs> How do I, I do this? I hope someday he has a podcast that I could. <laughs> I was playing the long game. I hope his other engineer could quit. <laughs> no, I mean, I it, it, honestly, this has been like a, a sort of a, an interesting transitionary year for me. I sort of got opened up like a, the company I was working for went totally bankrupt. And so then I've sort of had a, a year of self-reflection and uh, just sort of needed to pick up some gigs. And Michael was kind enough to let me, you know, do this while I continue to work on other stuff. And it's fun. Does he annoy you? Well, now. No, it's fine. I'm Is that sure a no or I'm now? sure I annoy everybody. No. No, I, I really enjoy this. This has been a lot of fun. It is fun. I, I, I love having you here. And, you know, it wasn't one of those things where I you said you just said something like uh, Michael, you know, gave me this opportunity. The, the reason I wanted him to be here is because, first of all, it happened. I do these art night. It's this therapeutic thing that my friends come over and we just have art night. So Ryan started coming with Amanda, his girlfriend, and all my friends. And I, but by the way, I've known Ryan for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always liked Ryan. And then I was like, fuck, I need an engineer. And did you say, did you mention it or who, wh how did it happen? Amanda might have ushered me towards it because she's good about that. Yeah, I think she Aww. said something like, well, if you need an engineer or something, Ryan, I go, Ryan, do you want to do that? You're like, sure. So I go, fuck yeah, let's do it. And it was just like that. And within a week, Ryan was, he was learning how to do it. And uh, he's done like seven episodes already. Wow. So had you done a lot of this before then or you were? Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd done this before. So you weren't necessarily learning as you went on this. I mean, this is sort of a different format than I'm used to. Right. But um, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. But, you know, the cool thing is, is Ryan is like, hey, this just happened. And I'm enjoying this. And it's fun. And I'm learning a lot. And I mean, and who knows what will happen after this? Like I said, I'm definitely one of those, you know, I took that um, Indiogram. And you find out what you are. You should take an Indiogram. Everybody should. I've talked about it, I think, before. But it tells you what you are. You just be honest with all the questions. And I'm a helper. I'm a loyalist. And I'm an enthusiast. And so a helper, it's not that I want to help. But to me, I'm like, fuck. Not only do I want to succeed in this podcast to get bigger and bigger. But man, what if this was a full-time job for Ryan? And I can hang out with him all the time. Or somebody buys it. And inside he's on TV. And Ryan's my fucking Ed McMahon. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'm his Ed McMahon. You're always hoping things work. Yeah. You know, what works for you? What are you like going, you know what, Laura, good for you. I'm proud of you. And I'm good with this. That's a heavy question. It's not that hard. Well, no, I, it is hard. I know. It is. I, I'm, I'm the, my family is the best part of my life for sure. I'm very close with them. Um, it, it, that's a tough question for someone who doesn't feel like they figured it out yet. Uh, so, I'm but, not sure. but I, I am proud of what I've done. I've, I've started off as a kid doing in this business. And I, I had to grow up really quickly because I wanted to match the adults on set. I wanted to be perfect. I wanted to be memorized and professional. But one thing that I really wish I had done was enjoyed more of my childhood because I took it so seriously. I didn't start enjoying what I do for a living probably until six years ago. So now I'm learning to enjoy it and to not try to just like be perfect. Like I enjoyed Smallville. I enjoyed moments of it, but the whole time I was like, don't fuck up, don't get fired. I have you know. to be perfect. I have to yeah, be great. They yeah. have to like me. Yeah. And I was playing Supergirl. Like there was a lot of people that wanted specific things from me. Um, and, and not just the producers, the audience. Like I wanted to be that person. Like you and Tom wanted to be those characters perfectly for that audience, but also have your own spin on it. And I just, I think I struggled with that pressure. I was 17. So 18. You know, when we dated, I felt like, because I'm such a kid, I, I saw you open up and have fun. Mm -hmm. I think you were learning how to have fun. Yeah, I, that's exactly what it was. And I there's a weird part of me that's like, if I'm truly laughing or smiling, I feel like oh, I'm not allowed to do this. Like I, I have to, that's why I started drinking. <laughs> Are you drinking now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You I are. didn't really drink before. 
And there was no reason that I didn't do it other than I wanted to be in control. And now it's, you know, I'll, I'll have sake or. Oh, so you're not an alcoholic. No, no. Oh, okay, like I'll, okay. I'll have a drink and that allows me to, you know, I'm allowed to have fun. I'm allowed to enjoy this because I didn't really know how to do that. I like this conversation. I didn't really know exactly where it would go I or what to do, but, but I like that you're opening up. I like that. That's just a great quality is being vulnerable and I'm doing that. This this show has, has given me uh, that opportunity, but you also have to give yourself that opportunity, whatever that is, to to be vulnerable. My therapist said, I want you to just feel. I want you to be vulnerable. I want you to feel. I want you to love. I want you to, and it was just like, what, what, what? What do you mean? So the other night I'm watching a movie. I have horror nights with my friends, as you know, and there's this movie and I got emotional at the end. And all these other guys are kind of like laughing or talking or whatever. And Rob's like, Rosenbaum's crying again. And he was just kidding. But I was like, you guys aren't? That's a really sweet moment. They both lost their mother. All these kids died. I know it sounds horrible, but like I was, I was a little emotional. I wasn't bawling, but I, I'm le- allowing myself. I used to like right when I felt that, you know, that feeling where it hits your nose mm-hmm, and right in between mm-hmm. your eyes, that that first, that like little beginnings of like- The tingling. That, that little, that like I could cry thing. Yeah. And, but now I'm like, I used to be like, stop, go, go other way. And then you're out of it. You're allowing it to come out. But I just want to embrace moments where I could just feel, where I could let it go. In fact, I said to my therapist, can I, I asked her, can I, can, can, like a kid, can I like watch a sad movie once in a while and cry just, just to get cries out? I felt like I was eight years old. She's like, yes, but please don't do it every day. <laughs> so I go, I go, she goes, well, what movie? I go, I know right now. What movie I, would make you cry? Uh, there's two, when um, Hobson dies in the movie Arthur, mm. you know, and that's his dad. That's always really been his dad, even though it's not his dad. It's his, um, you know, somebody who's uh, at the at the mansion who takes care of Butler. Butler. You know, and you know, it's like, it's a, it was kind of, and it, it's, you never see him get emotional. And they both sort of are a little emotional, like they, they know this is the end. Mm-hmm. That moment, and then there's a, a couple of moments in Rocky. Do you cry a lot? Um, yeah. Yep. You, you do? Yeah. How often? Lately, like every day. Um, what makes you cry? Being alone. <laughs> what makes you cry? <laughs> <laughs> You're deflecting, aren't you? Yeah. Listen, I so I had a, I had a massage last night, and I I don't know if I ever introduced you to this woman, but I think you should use her. Uh, Tom uses her now. I introduced her to Tom, Nicole Lazinger. Um, wow. We'll talk about that after. Plug. She does, well, she does Reiki as well. But I I had her over last night and we were talking about meditation. I said, I've never known how to do it. I don't, I, I'm either going to fall asleep or I can't shut this off. And I don't want to sit alone with what's going on in, in here, my mind. She said, well, how do you tap into emotions for work? Like there must be a meditation there. I said, no, literally if I have an experience, I put it in a box and that's that box for when I need to act that way on camera. Mm. These are my tear boxes. These are my happy, joyful boxes. She's like, so meditation is opening up all of those boxes at once and just feeling it. And so that's what you're reminding me of is just like your therapist said, let it, just let it happen. Like I don't, I've never watched The Notebook because I don't want to deal with those emotions. Did you watch it, Ryan? Yeah, I've seen it. Of course. Did you cry? No, uh, no. What? Uh, Dude, I, I was Ball State University. I kept thinking of my grandparents. What makes you cry? What movies you cry from? Um, most. I mean, don't say Blade Runner. No, like Coco. Remember Coco, the, the I Pixar? cried. God, not yeah. come to think of it, I cry a lot. I don't cry a lot, but that made me cry. Up. Up uh, made me. Cr- you didn't yeah. see up? Oh, of course, up. of course, of course. Dude, bald. Also, there's just a lot of songs on the radio now. If they, re- if you relate to it. Like for me, crying when I'm driving. Um, so, all right. So you do cry a lot. You're in your head. You don't like being alone. That's what it is. You do not like being alone. I like being physically alone for a couple of days because I'm an introvert and I need my space and I like my routine. But in life, I need to be connected to someone or family. So LA is a very like, I have a place here that I bought. I live by myself. My dog's not here right now. So walking in the door to quiet was nice for a second. And then it's like hell. You know what I mean? I'm sure you're the same way. You always have to have something going on. You know what you need? A parakeet. Again, this isn't me giving advice. Although it sort of is because my advice is, you know what my advice was? My The best advice somebody gave me and I still haven't conquered it yet. My 
psychiatrist looked at me, this old guy with a beard, beautiful man, the first time I've ever felt safe with someone. Hmm. And I remember the first eight sessions, he's like, we can, you're very, this is difficult. It's not that cut and dry with you. It is, there's a lot of things going on. You got the child, you got this, that we could be, I haven't, we're getting there. Just bear with me. We're going to get there. We're going to find, you know, and it was that thing where he's very honest. It wasn't like, okay. And then he said something like in the last two sessions, you know what, you know what you need? He goes, Michael, all of this stuff. I'm going to share this. This guy is a thousand dollars a day. Okay. It's expensive as shit. I, I mean, thank God I somehow could afford it. But I, I know that I needed to go to the best. I know that I needed to really break through and have breakthroughs. It's your life. And it's I important. was my, I'm the investment that the most important investment no, nothing matters if i'm happy and fulfilled and have purpose and feel these things i'd rather be if somebody said you, you're broke fuck it's not a furniture I'm, store that you're investing in that goes no, under it's yourself a million percent that's 100 percent worth it he says i want you to be in love i want you to love i want you to the hardest part michael though he said is for you to accept love that you're worthy of being loved. And it, and it was really like, uh, as you guys are looking at me, I'm sure. Ryan's looking down, he doesn't want to. He's uncomfortable. Know. But you know what? <laughs> he was, because if you think about it, you're like, what? That's so simple. That It's how, not, it's really how, not. But how could I, but how is he so right with something so simple? This is, this, is what he, this is what he gave me? This is the therapy? This is, and the same day, I had another session with this other woman, with this woman, and she goes, I think once you really fall in love and allow yourself to be loved, and it's going to be very difficult. I go, wait a minute. Are you talking to Dr. Tesla? Are you guys? She said, what? No. What are you talking about? I go, he said the same thing. He goes, well, he also said all this stuff right now is, is, is bullshit. It's great. You're in movies. You have a podcast. You have this. You're writing scripts. You have a great life, whatever. But all that stuff, it's all bullshit. Do you know what isn't bullshit? What, what human beings need is we need love. We want to be loved. We want to feel love. We want to feel safe. We want to be in love. And to love, and that that is the most, I think you you will thrive if you could allow. And it will be difficult because you'll look for things. I don't know. There, no, look, he said, there are red flags. And those red flags, oh, this person's an alcoholic. Oh, this person's uh, a drug addict. Or, oh, this person is a thief. Whatever it is, those are red flags. those things in one person, right? Or, experienced. But if it's things like, oh, her toe's bigger than the other. Who gives a shit? Yeah, her, I think this, you're really picky. Because you're looking, he says, I'm looking at myself. Right. If you really enjoy someone and you really trust them and you feel safe, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And I think... Being alone, and by the way, I took a, I, I sort of, I did something that was a test to myself. I tried to be alone a lot. I tried to not always work, and I started to become more of a hermit. I noticed that the depression got worse, and the anxiety got worse, and I couldn't understand. It's like, are you that fucked up that you can't be alone, dude? And the reality is that being alone is not always a good thing and if you don't have structure in your life if you don't have routine in your life not you or you ryan all of us mm -hmm. will go fucking bananas mm -hmm. if you wake up and go what am i going to do today you'll end up doing nothing That's you won't feel fulfilled nightmare. you'll be depressed so what i do on sundays i plan the week out here's my calendar if you look in my office you're going to see that i'm crazy people will go why do you have three calendars even jess is like what are you doing I have a little one for the week. I have a bigger one chalkboard for the month. And I have my other one that if I have to look in the car with what I'm doing. So I always know what's going on and I structure it. Hey, I don't have any podcasts this week. I should book a podcast. I should make sure because I'm, I'm ahead of the game. I have like eight or 10 episodes. You know what? Let's find one. Let's, you know what? You're going to work out on this day. You know what? You're going to set up a meeting and talk about this animated series. You know what? You are going to meditate every day of your fucking life. You are going to do, and when you have structure and routine, which I just didn't, I let all that go. You'll fucking go bananas. Yeah. Do you have structure? Um, I'm I'm same to, as you. I make sure that I have it. Because you'll go bananas. Yeah, I 
especially being here, if I'm not busy working, I know I'm taking meetings, I'm trying to develop three films right now. So I make sure there's a balance, you know, working out, hiking with friends, all of that stuff. But there, you know, nighttime, you're by yourself. And that's the time that you reflect on your day. And that can go either way. Is your career so important to you where you want to act for the rest of your life? Or could you sit, live a simple life? Could you li honestly, someone said, let's go um, move to a small town or whatever and just figure it out and get away from everything? Or are you someone that just needs, you love acting, you love all this, you have to do this? I would say it's 50-50. I, I love to get away and escape this. But there's a part of me that this is all that I've ever done. This I, I've acted my whole life. So I wouldn't say that I love acting. I, I love being busy and being productive and developing and creating projects. So I'm 50-50. I could move away to a small town and never do this again, but I might drive myself crazy unless I find another passion that feels productive every day. Because I, I, I can't even go on vacation for more than two days and and – chill the F out because I start going, oh, I should be doing this. I should be doing that. Oh, I have this idea. I should take that meeting. You know, I think similar to you, we have to force ourselves to take that time and then can't do a lot of that because it's also not healthy. You know, I noticed I was doing my friend Rob's birthday. It was his 40th birthday. Happy birthday, dancing. I, I was at his little party last night, a small gathering. And I know some emails came up and, you know, I was at the dinner table and everybody's kind of talking and I kind of started looking at my phone. And I was like, oh, I gotta respond to that, I gotta respond to that. And then I stopped about five minutes in, and I go, this is your best friend's birthday. This is a person who makes your life better. Mm -hmm. Get off the fucking phone. phone. It's not important. Your agent isn't saying, they need to know right this fucking second about, nothing is that important. What's important are memories, connections, mm -hmm. love. And that's what I'm working on. I'm working on all these little things like, God, the phone. Isn't it amazing what the phone can do? If we didn't have these cell phones, and by the way, they're great in so many ways because I could talk to my grandparents, but God bless, man, if we didn't have these, we're always on them. Yeah. From the time we wake up to the time we get, so I'm trying to eliminate as much as I can. It should not be the first thing you look at in the morning or the it's last an, thing you, know, you look at at night. It's not in the morning. I've done that. I fixed that. I do not look at my phone till an hour in after I do all my chores and all that stuff. But at night, I've got to stop that. I, I was reading for a while. I got to go back to reading. Phone goes off at 10, done. I was told uh, that there, and I, I have to look into it, on the iPhone, there's the ability to, at a certain time, your blue light on your phone oh, yeah. can turn off. I tried that. So if you do look at your phone, you're not stimulated by the blue light. I think everybody knows that. Okay, well, that's new to me. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking with you. Do you, um, <laughs> do you take uh, any kind of... Uh, medication to to uh for depression or anxiety or anything no no nope. never never have I, I i tried when i first moved to la depression medication didn't work for me because i i was like a zombie i couldn't memorize my auditions i just felt like i wasn't on it uh so i stopped that i've taken nothing except tequila shots sometimes sometimes a tequila shot <laughs> as long as it's not like five every night but that's not true i i've done the cbd pens this has been great look what's going on right now in with work you're developing or? a lot of stuff but, I yeah mean, you, like what's what's important to you that you're working on right now or that you want to get going or that uh you have the netflix series so yeah the netflix series v wars um, v wars what's that about vampires vampires again again i've never done vampires this is a new thing what well, was bitten werewolves werewolves <laughs> fuck remember uh remember uh what we do in the shadows we're yeah. werewolves not swear wolves yes because yes, he was swearing yeah. So that's fun. You're gonna be a vampire. Well, I, I can't say if I am or I'm not one at this oh, point. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, that's true. And uh, who's yeah. in it? Who's in it? Anybody I know? In Summer Halder, Adrian Holmes. Dude. All right, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Who was on Smallville? Yeah, right? I love Adrian. Yeah. Okay. Adrian hang on. Awesome. I've first time I worked with Adrian was like nine years ago on a movie called Damage. In, in, I love Adrian. Yeah, he's great. He's, he's fantastic. He's you gotta uh, give him my love. He's number two on that show. What are you? I'm not gonna say. Do you realize how big that show is going to be? I hope it does well. Wait, wait, wait. Ian Summerholder has such a huge following. He's yeah. a nice guy, but he has billions of followers. Mm -hmm. This show is going to get seen. You're going to go to conventions and people are going to mob you. 
That's just the reality. You, I'm telling you, when this comes out, I'm just, remember this conversation. Mm-hmm. It's just vampires. He did vampire diarrhea, uh, diaries. <laughs> diaries. And no, no, it's true. That brings me back to conventions when you make the uh, signer do the diarrhea over and over again. Have you seen, have you seen tell, him do that? Tell the, tell the audience about that. It's the most annoying thing. Um, you love it. You know what? I do it for Tom. Tom loves it. Tom loves it. And the fans it. love it. And, the, and, the and de- Tom loves us arguing. And the hearing impaired love it. Right. Okay, so there's always an interpreter or a signer on stage when we're doing conventions. And I think the first time you did it, it was funny. He repeated diarrhea over and over again. So she had to keep doing that symbol and everyone thought it was great. And then he's done it at every convention. Diarrhea, diarrhea. And she's yeah. just doing that nonverbal. Diarrhea, diarrhea. Hands whipping down. And and I the remember, whole crowd's I just loving it. The first time Kristen did a convention with you and she texted me after and I was like, did you survive? She was like, oh my God, the diarrhea thing. I mean, we all think it's funny. But remember the last time you did it, I was like, find new material, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But people love you. We love you. You know, you entertain us. Thank God you take over the, the Q&As because Tom and I couldn't do it without you. I love it. You know, what, you know what I love mostly about Tom is that, you know, a lot of actors, every time I did an interview with another actor for a show or a movie, They'd always, I could tell they feel like they're being upstaged because I just go on and they, and I could tell they don't like it. And it makes me uncomfortable, which makes me then not want to be myself. But when I'm with Tom, he says, fucking do your thing, dude. Fucking do it. Yeah. Fucking do it. And there's some, I could tell some people are like, oh, he's upstaging me. I'm not meaning to. I'm just having fucking fun. Well, okay. So can I just refer back to what we talked to at the beginning of this podcast? You said you're uncomfortable with those things. So you put on your personality. Right. But then you just said, I'm being myself up there. People just need to be okay with no, that. No, Q&As are different. They are. Q&As are different because when you're in a convention, the people are there to see you. So, so it's not uncomfortable because they're there to see you. You know why you're there. But when you go to like an event or something and there's oh, a bunch of people that. you don't yeah. know and you're like, oh, oh, I don't know. What am I supposed to? I, I, you just, but immediately when I'm on stage like Michael Rosenbaum, they are asking me questions and I am going to run with it. Yeah. And and I don't I I don't feel like you're upstaging at all. Like Tom and I love that you do that because we can just laugh and and like watch the show every time. But there are moments where, you know, for for instance, I wanted to talk about Age of Dysphoria or V Wars and like the convention or the the panel is over. I think the last one we were at oh, and we great. were getting up to walk away and I was like, fuck it. And I grabbed the mic. I'm like and then I just said the things that I wanted to talk about within like two minutes. You just know what to get though? You know what though? Next time we do one together. I, but fir- you're also great when I don't get any questions because everyone loves you and Tom, and I completely understand that. I'm lucky that I get to do this with you guys because I only did a couple seasons, but you're really great about asking the audience to ask me questions, Always. which I appreciate. Always, because I yeah, I, they, I think they really do want to hear it. They get caught up, but I'm like, you know, Laura did this, or Laura did what Laura, yeah. what do you think? I always, I always And that, that always means a lot to me because there will be times at panels that I don't say a lot, and I'm okay with that because I'm a fan. I was a fan of Smallville before I was on it. I want to hear what you guys have to say. And, you know, you're really nice to have the audience remember that i'm sitting well, thank there. you you know we're doing tom and i are doing this thing I, I know i came up with this idea called smallville nights I, I saw. and so it's just tom and i and we do this i can't tell you but some so we it's at night after the convention's over and we do this hour thing i can't, i'll tell you afterwards what we do but it's unlike anything we do at the q a's there's some things that we do that will never be done and we don't want any cameras or video or you'll never come back to one of these things again so it's a moment that you'll remember and you'll have fun and it's like a Oh, I was going to ask you this. I know now it's a little space in between, but you know, you work, you worked with Allison. Have you talked about this on your podcast? Um, a little bit, not a lot, but what was your relationship with her? And did you see, did you like, when people ask me, I'm like, I, you know, I just thought she was a really sweet girl who needed attention like every actor. And, uh, but she, you know, who would ever known this, right? you know, so you don't ever, I never expected anything, but I'm just wondering if you saw anything or if you noticed like, "Mm, that's weird or that makes sense. Um, I didn't know her. I rarely worked with her. She rarely talked to me. Did she ever ask you to come join Nexium? Yes. She did. Yeah. Is it Nexium or Nexus? Nexium. Nexus is the thing you get into the country with. Nexium. Yeah, it, but it was that wasn't the name of it when I had just moved to LA and she, for someone who didn't talk to me ever, um, FaceTimed me and said they had a 
an organization of women. It was a retreat, you know, it's support. It's because I didn't know any, I knew you, you were the only person I knew in Los Angeles. And it sounded strange and it was also expensive and I didn't have the money and I didn't end up doing it. And, um, that's what it was. And I think there was a part of me that was like, she was willing. She asked me, she knew what was happening. Although I hear it became that later, but the fact that she was like, Oh, you're lonely and new. Come on over. So she felt like she felt your vulnerability. Yeah. And I don't know if at the time that's what it was, that's what it was. It could have genuinely been, let's read books and talk about them. And were you considering it at that point? No. I mean, because you thought maybe it was a retreat. There was no part in you that thought, maybe this will help me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I just couldn't afford to do it. So if you could afford it, you probably would have gone. Probably would have gone. Thank God I was broke. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Jeez Louise. But I, I was surprised. I, I was surprised. She's a very smart woman. That's one thing I knew about her. She was very smart. Yeah. So that's why I don't understand. I don't think anybody will understand. Sometimes you see things that, will, that happen in the world and you're like, why what this, this just doesn't add up but when you when it comes down to it i think how well do you really know someone i mean i'm on smallville for seven years and i think i got to know tom when he came on the podcast the very first time right i was gonna say and that's when we started just talking about a lot of because we always we always laughed all you wanted to do on set was laugh but to connect to really you know and Kristen would come into town after the smallville was over and we'd have dinner Mm -hmm. And we start to get to know each other. Yeah. And you, after Smallville, we'd start to get to know each other. In a different way. When you're way. on a show, it's just sort of like, it's not like it's fake, but it's just not, it's not real. I understand you what you're what saying. You know what I mean? It's yes. not, it's a, but I mean, it's the same thing for me, Erica, I've become close with in the past few years. Kristen, same thing. Tom and his, his fiance and- Jesse. Jesse. Um, are you going to the wedding? I'm in it. Oh, congratulations. No, no I'm not in it. I am. Me? I'm just showing up. Are you really? Yeah. You fuck. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm really not. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. But I didn't get to know them. And uh, we went to Cabo and I got to know Tom in that environment where he was just loose and and, drunk I, I, and, and yes. saying boisterous things. Oh my God, the loudest guy. He like jumped a oh giant my God. horse. <laughs> <laughs> statue i was oh like oh God. i've never I'm seen i'm like his this little guy. brother sometimes i'm just like tom cut it out where he's always telling me to cut yeah. it out so yeah we are we're like brothers yeah you got you guys are great together well look this i i had a blast first of all i cannot thank you enough for being so open yeah. this is the most i talked to ryan too but it was it was warranted it felt comfortable and ryan i think i'd like to talk to you more during oh, interviews great. if other people are cool with it sure it's are you comfortable open. with that yeah i mean but it's i mean it's mostly about the two of you guys i'm just i know here I get, you know a, I get a microphone which is fun until a year later he's like um my agent will call you my lawyer because i uh <laughs> i want 25 percent until my name's on the podcast anywhere but it's inside you with michael, inside you with oh. michael featuring, featuring Laura. <laughs> featuring quiet ryan <laughs> um thank you for allowing me to be inside of you <laughs> <laughs> that was her using the CBD on common apothecary, and it sounded like a perfect fart. Timing. That was perfect. Rub it all over your back and it all that really stuff. Good. You guys, I'm sure you've heard wow. me talk about it, but it's it's great stuff. And uh, hey, um, what's your uh, handles? Twitter, uh, Vandykins22, and Instagram, Super Vandy. Vandykins is a nickname that Patrick Warburton gave me, and that's how that's. Let me oh, excuse me, Vandykins. I bet he's like this. He's like Laura. How are you? You know, Patrick Warburton, doesn't he kind of do that thing? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Vandykins. Vandykins. Well, he's Patty uh, Warbucks. Patty Warbucks. Did yeah. he name himself that? I don't know. Probably. That's what I called him. Can you get him on the show? Actually, there's someone I think I could get on the show that you'd, Who? That you'd like. We'll talk about it later. Look, this has been great. Take your mug, take your CBD. We're going to see each other at a con soon. Guys, thank you for listening to the podcast. Laura Vandervoort, thank you for allowing me to be inside of you. You're welcome. <laughs> this has been really fun. All right, guys. So what did you think of the episode? We're going to have a thing where, you know, I, I want you to tweet. I want you to let me know what you think. And if you have any questions or things you want me to ask guests in particular, it doesn't matter about the guest as much as uh, we like to surprise you with a guest. And even if you don't know them, obviously... You listen anyway, and that's why I love you, and that's why I'm still doing this, although I'd still do it because I love doing it. But this episode uh, with Laura was interesting, and it's always, uh, on the other podcast I have in love with Chris Sullivan and Michael Rosenbaum, um, we had my ex-girlfriend on, on Andrea Bogart, and uh, it was really interesting. She brought her child, and we talked about why it didn't work and who I was, and 
it was I was really vulnerable. And um, this podcast, having Laura on, we were both going through our own shit, and um, she she acknowledges it. You know, uh, she talks about almost dying as a child, her parents, and and, and just working. And you know, I, I think she opens up more so than I think she would have when we dated, which is telling. And I think I'm the same way. I think we're both in, on different in different places. And I think that's just a maturity thing. <laughs> Maybe not with me, but I think that you know, as we grow and you start to realize that vulnerability is good, and people seeing emotions, that's actually healthy. Getting rid of bad habits. I think that's a big thing. And so this this podcast was really nice. And you know, when my grandpa died, Laura texted me immediately, and she says, "If you need anything," and I know she meant it. She met Irv. Um, she loved Irv. And um, I'm glad that we've, uh, from doing these conventions, Laura and I have um, been able to be friends again. And uh, it's not like we hang out, but it's nice to see her and goof off and uh, just be friends. And and I think that shows a maturity. I'm going to read some of these messages from the message board. You can go to hello at insideofyoupodcast.com or you could tweet me and Instagram me. So this is part of the outro for what we're doing now. I just want to read you some of these questions. Okay. Hi, Michael. This comes from Lizanne. She's an actor, writer, storyteller. I've been listening to your podcast for a while now, and I've, I felt compelled to write in after listening to your interviews with Andy McDowell and Jamie King. Whether you ever read this random email or not, I just felt like I had to reach out and tell you how amazing I think the show is. You and your team have created something quite special. Inside of You is one of the most honest podcasts I've ever heard. Yes, it's therapy for you and your guests, but also for us as listeners. Amen, Lizanne. When you and Andy were talking about her experience with Bill Murray and the idea that she merely wanted to please him, it really hit a chord. Like wanting to please your father, is how I think you put it. I'm still at the beginning of my acting career, five years in, I recently worked opposite a comedic legend. To hear the two of you speak about something that felt similar to my own experience was quite comforting. Sometimes you just want to know you're doing a good job. Uh, Jamie's interview, she says, when you both spoke about feeling safe, about meditation, about your own personal journey to connecting to a higher power and how having a routine helps when it comes to battling depression, it was so deeply refreshing to hear. It was just a lovely reminder to me that in order to be of service to others, you have to take care of yourself first. You're making a difference in the world by merely being honest about every aspect of of this life. So thank you. Thank you for putting everything you've got into this podcast. Well, thank you for listening and thank you. I'm just, I'm blessed. I'm grateful that it helped you in some way. Jonathan, hey, Rosie, just want to let you know how much I appreciate you and your podcast. Been listening for a couple months now, and it's seriously changed my life. Being able to hear so many of these people I find to be very successful and hear how they're going through or have been through so many of the same things I'm going through is amazing to me. I have a bipolar mom, an alcoholic dad, and to hear you talk to people that have gone through the same things and how they dealt with it helps so much. You and Zach Levi just about brought me to tears talking about your mothers. I've related so much to y'all in that moment. I'm currently listening to Jamie King and her talking about finding God in a bookstore almost brought me to tears. I paused it and started to write you this message because I had to let you know how much this means to me and I'm sure to so many others. That actually just brought me to almost tears. (sighs) Ryan's in the room, so I won't do it. I viewed most of these people as celebrities and not much more but you have completely changed my view on so many of them. You have now made me a fan of them as people, not just for their work. Ain't that the truth, man? That's what, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I appreciate what you're doing so much. I listen to so many other podcasts and none has grabbed me like yours. I've also started listening to your new podcast with Sully and currently going through a hard breakup. This has become the perfect time and I find myself trying harder to be, to better myself. I started going to therapy, and it's thanks to you. Sorry for such a long message, but I felt you should know how much you're appreciated. Thanks so much. P.S. Your podcast is way better than Dax's. I love Dax. He won't listen to this anyway. He doesn't have time. Tim, lastly. Hey, man, I don't know if you're actually going to read this, but thanks for doing this podcast and showing me that people 
that may seem to have it all have gone through hardships and tough times in their lives. The recent Dane Cook episode hit home when he spoke about the relationship he had with his father being basically all about sports. I too had the same type of relationship with my father until his untimely passing in January of this year. Unlike Dane's father, my dad was a Mets fan. (laughs) That's funny. That's what my dad is and what I am. You and I both know how that 86 World Series turned out. Anyway, thanks for doing this podcast and making me feel comfortable in my own feelings. And every now and then, bringing a tear to my eye. All love, Tim. It's nice to read these, Ryan. That's really nice. It is. It's it's nice to just kind of like, this is about being present. It's like, that's why I wanted to start doing these outros of reading things that people say and absorbing them and saying, hey, I'm listening to you. You know, it makes me feel good that it, that we're doing something right here. Yeah, it you was know? really thoughtful. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So, guys, have a happy, happy holiday. If you're bored, you know, listen to Left on Laurel. Our CD's still out. It's been out for about a month now. Thank you for everybody who came out to the autograph signing in Covina at Chaos Records. Thank you for everybody who came out to the Roxy, who listened to the Stage It online performance from us. Thank you for buying merch, for uh, listening to the band. Thank you for listening to the podcast, In Love podcast, Inside of You podcast. Thank you for your endless support. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Thank you for allowing me to be inside all of you. (laughs) 